there is something happening that's far beyond us. These locations are calling out to Chad. I think they're the ones that are pushing him in a very specific direction. This is bigger than what people realize. They call you back. As far as Chad goes, like he is one of the most caring people that I've ever known, especially somebody who's been in the public eye as long as Chad has. Even here at Malvern Manor, there are tour guests that come in for a day tour that are bringing up the Kalik family haunting, bringing up American Ghost Hunter. He has never lost that, that compassion for people, just the humanity. Suicide in Iowa is up 17%. According to the most recent data released by the Department of Public Health, 445 people took their own lives in 2013. CBS 2 News reporter Melanie Moore talked to local experts today. And Melanie, what were their thoughts? Experts at the Crisis Center in Iowa City can't explain why there's an increase, but they say the stats are alarming. For every 100,000 Iowans, roughly 17 of them will die by suicide. That's, That's almost double, double the number, number in 2005. 2005. More teenagers in Iowa made plans about how to take their own life. The number increased by more than 50% in the last six years. One in 10 students reported planning their suicide in the past year. One in 20 tried, tried to, to do it. it. you are and of you right i'm gonna be honest besides counseling i've never shared any of this you're the only person alive that was in that house with him you saw it whatever occurred yeah i woke up to someone breaking in the house I came through the kitchen and I could see someone's hand reaching in to unlock the door. The door opened then and he literally ran past me, went into our bedroom, walked by our daughter. Our daughter was sleeping in our bed. Right. I just remember following him and all of a sudden I see a gun in his hand. All I said was, I'm calling you the cops. So I was on the phone with 911 when the gunshots went off. Wow. Where was the shot that actually took his life? Through his mouth. Oh, dear. Yeah. He was not a, a guy that was just known for being this violent person that would do things of this nature. I don't even know how to explain it. When he ran past me, it was like the devil was in his body. I know exactly what you're talking about. Where he's them, but it's not them. I came into your life, I think, when I was 12. We did go to Minden Junior High together, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. Um, That's the first time I remember seeing you <laughs> way back then. Describe our relationship over the years. I always just thought that you were just very handsome. I always loved your dimples and your blue eyes. You were someone that I could honestly confide in. For me, Chad, I knew that the time that I got to have with you and have those conversations, it was so valuable to me. Yeah. And then I had anticipation for the next time that we could connect again. Right. You know what I mean? 100%. It was like we had to hide our friendship. We did. Because you were someone I could have been with. Yes. Me too. <laughs> so because we had different relationships with different people and stuff like that. Right. We didn't want anyone's hands in our thing. Exactly. We weren't doing anything wrong. It was right. just that we just had this connection. No, I totally agree. And I didn't want anybody to fuck with it. Mm-hmm. And you were friends with so many people, even more so than I was, that aren't here anymore. I guess I knew you would care. When we started losing people, 
I remember the interview with you in American Ghost Hunter where you said, I've dealt with more death being from our hometown than you know most people do out throughout a lifetime. I don't know if there's burial ground somewhere or something we don't know about or something to uncover, but it's definitely out of character for me. And I remember that striking me so hard, just that quick little thing that you dropped in there, it fucking haunted me because I knew there was something stronger around here that had something to do with this place. Because let's go down the list right now and I'll beat their last names out, but just- There's yep. And there's yep. And there's yep. And then, um, Mm-hmm. And suicide? Dad. It's dead. Was and then brother. Brother. Yep. Wasn't there one of the Yes. Um Yeah. And what's wild about that is we're such a small community, a small class, a small yeah. school. That's a lot of people for a small suite. I've lived in LA for 20 years and have met more people at that stage in my life than I've ever had any other time. I don't know one that's killed themselves. I live in Des Moines and I know quite a few, yeah. which is even crazier. To yes. have that many people in your circle that you know kill themselves. It's crazy. This has always stuck with me as something terrifying. And I recognized there was something going on that was not normal. With you, unless something happens to you and it's like really, really ultra obvious that you can't really let your mind go there. We've been to numerous haunted places around here. We were in Davenport one night where the weirdest shit in the world went on of things banging and knocking. And you experienced that with me. You have to hit something hard. See, if that's you, we still can't distinguish between that. I know that was louder. It's going to have to even be louder. Holy shit. That was louder. Did you hear that was louder? Dude, I am getting freaked. Did you hear that? That was louder. Yeah. Okay. Move something in this room. Oh, shit. Whoa! What was that? Holy Jesus! <laughs> if that was you that just made that little knock, you're gonna have to do it a lot louder. A hell of a lot louder. Oh, oh shit. shit! Whoa! It's coincidental. I would say it's overly coincidental if something isn't doing it. When we went back into my bedroom in American Ghost Hunter, when I first sat down, I was fine, and then you suddenly started getting freaked out, and you're like looking around, and you're going, dude, what is that? What is that? Like you're on camera doing it. And you can feel it, and I felt it too. Yeah. It feels so geeky in here. Yeah. Well, that too. Yeah, I feel this. Yeah. Well, listen. I came to do what I, what I came to do. I don't want to stay here any longer because we got this family living here now. No. You feel this, I feel this. I did what I had to do. Let's just get out of here. Yeah. Something is invading in those natural body responses that you have. To me, it felt like an electrical field was getting charged. Like you could feel the vibrations of the electricity starting to get going through you. So I know you know that there's weird stuff that doesn't make sense, that doesn't add up. You know, my father believed that there was something even larger at play, that it wasn't just house-based, that it was area-based. Do you think it's possible, I guess, that this area is feeding off of something that's creating these type of things to happen here? Why would your brain tell you evil that just hits you for no reason? There is no experiment you can do to try to come up with an answer there. And then if the answer is just, they can't help it because there's paranormal spirits, your story has become tiresome. <laughs> I just, I, I'm not gonna accept a paranormal excuse for this. Why are there only paranormal spirits that are making them do things? Good question, but you just asked it in a dismissive way, rather than saying, I really wanna know why. I think there's something going on there 
that's definitely spiritual. Whenever people get into hard times, what have we seen throughout the course of history? They start to pray. I think they know there's something bigger than me. I'm not trying to dismiss people's religious beliefs, but I always look at the concept of praying. It's almost like God to some people is a waiter. It's like you call him and go, hey, I got an order in place. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, I want this, this. Have you ever noticed you do that? He's taking whenever you, whenever you get to something that you don't have the answers to, yeah. you dismiss it and make fun of it. Have you ever noticed you should do that? But I you see do. the irony of it, though. It's not like I don't believe there is something bigger than us. But at some point, you have to agree on some basis of reality. I don't know. Throughout this whole thing, I guess where I'm going with this is I hope that you find a way to consider things that maybe you didn't consider. Like I said, when you come across things that you don't have answers to, you have a tendency to make fun of them. And I remember in our house in Persia, you making fun of shit. Until it happened to you. Yeah. George Bush said, oh, my, what, what, is that you, Mike Moore? You haven't got a real job yet? And everybody started laughing, and he got pissed. And at that point, I just saw Michael is going to make a documentary to try to destroy George Bush with it. Yeah, I'm not Michael Moore. Yeah. It, well, but if someone offends you, Justin, you're going to go make a documentary to fuck him over? Because you saw Michael Moore do it once? Yeah, I'm not saying that, though. There's something very real here, and at every turn... You know, I gotta feel like, Jesus, is Justin trying to sabotage me on this? No. My dad fucking got ripped apart by this shit. No. And I, you're making jokes about all this stuff. Like, it's funny to me. You're not often looking at the other things that could be leading to those things. Justin, I looked at the other things. The doctor said, with all the science that you love so much, we don't know. Something killed him. It's why I kept hopping on the new doctors on the phone. What's going on? Got, you gotta have something, right? Like something. Give me anything. What is it? I don't know. He just keeps talking about these monsters that are trying to attack him and they're gonna take his soul and he's aware of the murder. It's really crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. There's more to this world than you want to believe. But Chad, listen, if you think that there's just all this stuff that you know that nobody else knows that I can't know ever, or... Maybe that's no, true. I, I think you I don't do know. know it. I think you've witnessed it. It's not that I think you don't know it. I think you do. I, I don't know if I've ever witnessed absolute evil in any place in my life, ever. So, I mean, it would be hard for me to say, yeah, I absolutely understand it. I, I don't. I mean, if the, you know, I, I mean, is that what you're asking? I'm not asking anything. I don't know why you're getting mad about it. I, I just don't understand. I know, I know. It's not like... I know you don't. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Hey, it's me. I am so fucking frustrated right now. Justin and I just got into it. I just can't get him to see. People look up to him. And if he's running around just making funny shit all the time, it, it, it poisons the well. Everybody has to know what is possible or someone's gonna get hurt. All I know is right now, I don't feel safe around Justin. He was the name I called me with the best intention. I said I know we on the road you chose me. If you have the world to build, we could build until our hearts go. Claim that everything we have came from our heart's conviction And when we choose the tales we tell This would be the one we mention We talked about Christ's love soul And 
Cause I lay there in the back with my eyes wide to the heavens Wondering if my next breath will be my last breath forever And times I like please reveal the difference between how it is instead of how it seems I wish I could say we stay true to our heart's convictions But some choices are better lost to indecision And some calls should never be made And some words should never be spoken Cause your promises will need to be broken So you can claim you just misunderstood But you put it Price on brotherhood So you can say we're still the same But we both came to the table And when your hands became unstable I told you I shall finish the game You can watch the world burn You can watch the world burn As you watch the world burn I shall finish the game I shall finish the game I shall finish the game That's the reason we are not the same We are not the same No, we are not the same And as I lay there in the back With my eyes wide to the heavens Wondering if my next breath Will be my last breath forever In times like these reveal the difference Between how it is Instead of how it seems